Hey, Jonathan here at Colfax Math, all things math. Today we're going to work on triangles. I'm going to do this in all my class, both my shop classes and my math classes. So what we're going to do is we're going to build this little paper triangle thing here and talk about triangles all day. Um, so this is a good way I'm starting the year with this and a um, lot of really cool applications in building this and I'll go over that in this video. Okay, making this folding triangle thing, we're gonna start with the regular size sheet of A size paper, eight and a half by 11. And then we're gonna create an aspect ratio of one to two. So I'm gonna measure down five and a half, and five and a half. And then I'm gonna tear the paper. I'm gonna hold that down pretty hard. I do want it to be pretty accurate. So now my ratio of paper is one to two. And then from there, I'm gonna fold it in half once. And I do want nice crisp fold lines. I'm gonna fold it in half a second time. And fold it in half again here. So that folded in the force, open it back up. I'm gonna fold it this way in a force as well. Using my nail, fold this in here into force. Here. Really want to do this as accurately as you can. Nice strong creases and turn it over. Then I should have eight rectangles. And these rectangles should also be the ratio of one to two. Then I'm going to draw the diagonals in every one of these rectangles. So there they are there, there's my eight rectangles. Now I'm gonna fold these diagonals. I'm just gonna fold them up and over. And then after I fold it, then I'm gonna use my fingernail and get it nice fold line. Okay, so I have it folded up, and there are my eight rectangles and all my diagonals. And then I do want these fold lines to be very distinctive. Fold it back into force. And then this fourth right here, I'm gonna take and put back inside here. Yeah, so I'm going to put this inside of here. So it sits like that. Just tucked inside there. See that? Yeah. Now I want these triangles here to fold in. I'll 
fold lines aren't quite crispy enough. We gotta keep folding them in. So we're gonna keep folding it here. We're trying to get these triangles here to fold in. So if they aren't going in, I'm gonna fold them in and get those creases stronger. So I'm folding in these triangles here. Fold it in there. I'm gonna fold it in there and on this side too. And if they're not really laying flat, I'm gonna push them and squeeze them. Really wanna to get to this where I have a hexagon. Open it up, have another hexagon. Open it up, have another hexagon. And pushing these things flat really helps the pliability, I guess. So there it is there. And then this is kind of the harder step here. And now I want to fold this triangle in here. So I'm going to fold this triangle in. And again, it might not want to fold in, so I might have to Fold it so it will by folding that line. Fold this triangle in here. So it's not easy, but they're going to start folding in this way. And then as I fold them in, I need to just keep creasing those lines so they sit in there. Getting closer. I'm going to turn it over. It's looking pretty good there. I got to fold these in. Let me take these back out. Fold these in. There's a lot of playing here. Okay, it's looking pretty good. Fold it in. Starting to fold nicely. So that's a fun project to work with triangles. I'll show you some of the math we're going to do um, now that we've built our folding triangle thing. Um, before I do that, I just want to talk about NCTM's standards for mathematical practice. You know, these things are are great ideas and they're really a big part of every math classroom but sometimes I feel like doing projects like this really help highlight these standards for practice. Uh, one thing, attend to precision. It's a hard thing to talk about. It's hard, kids, hard to get kids to do that um, on a test or a worksheet but when they're actually building things if they don't attend to precision when they're folding this it all falls apart. Look for and make use of structure model i mean you're building a physical model which really kind of highlights it um, so I, I think projects like this really teach the mental habits and practices you need to be good at anything whether it's math or making stuff okay so here's our sheet we folded it in half well actually we created it a ratio a two to one first then we folded it up and then here are the diagonals this overall length was 11, and then we made it a ratio of two to one, so we cut the overall to five, right? And then we cut that in half, so this would be half of five and a half, right? Is two and three quarters. And you could just check that with the ruler if you want, or work on your fraction division. So then of the remaining eight rectangles that we made the triangles out of one individual rectangle here 
right? This rectangle here. is overall 11 and then a fourth of that so 11 times a fourth is two and three quarters so this base is two and three quarters and then this height is the five and a half divided by four or one and three eighths I can find the length of that diagonal using the Pythagorean theorem uh, because I have an aspect ratio of two to one all my ratios should stay two to one so one and three eighths is half of two and three quarters. And then from here, I'm just gonna have the students find all angles and sides in these triangles. I'm not gonna give them any dimensions. I want them to find angles and sides of this triangle, angles and sides of this triangle, angles and sides of this triangle, Uh, and then they're going to just kind of sketch all those out and draw them up and show uh, this triangle here. Um, how they found all of those pieces. Okay, a lot of things else you could do with this. I really like to talk about aspect ratios and paper size. Um, maybe I'll put a little video on talking about aspect ratios after this. And then I'll just pose a question like, is there a way to have consistent aspect ratios? And the answer is yes, you just have to have ma metric paper sizes. So Today's we're going to just talk about paper sizes in the U.S. So how paper sizes work in the U.S. is a size paper is eight and a half by 11. And then you just keep doubling that sheet of paper. So B is 11 by twice that, 17. C is 17 by twice that, 22. And D, 22 by 34. E, 34 by 44. So the next thing we can figure out from that is the aspect ratio, where we divide the length by the width. So I do 11 divided by 8.5 to get 1.29. That's the aspect ratio. 17 divided by 11, you get 1.54. 22 divided by 17, 1.29. 34 divided by 22, 1.54. So the first kind of question I pose is that it's not the same aspect ratio all the way through. And is it possible to even create the same aspect ratio? And why that would be important is, let's say you're drawing a house plan and you draw it on a size paper, and then you wanna make it larger to say D size paper, and then it's gonna mix up your proportions. So if you wanna to go to D size paper, you should probably draw it on B size first, and then your aspect ratio and proportions will be the same. So is there a way to have a consistent aspect ratio and the answer is yes, <clears throat> it's a metric system, uh, and I let them look it up and figure out how that all works. And really interesting introduction in the ratios, why they're important, how they work. Um,